Thank you, Michelle, for having me. I'm excited to be here to share a little bit about actions with you guys. They are not as scary as they seem, I promise. And we are going to walk through um, learning about actions, learning what they can do, and then we're going to take a look at several different actions and how to use them tonight. And you'll see how simple they can be once you get over that hump of installing them. And it, you will notice that my computer is a Mac, but don't let that freak you out because once we get over to Photoshop Elements, it's going to look just like the PC version and hopefully you won't even notice the difference. So with that, let's go ahead and get started here. Um, oh, wrong key. It's not working. Oh, I'm still in GoToMeeting. Oh, okay, there we go. Sorry. Okay, take two. Let's get started. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna talk about what actions are and what they are not. So actions are macros. They're pre-recorded steps that you can play back with the click of a button. And in Photoshop Elements, those are found in the Actions panel. And I'm gonna take you over there in just a couple minutes and show you that. What actions are not are presets. And the difference is subtle, but important. So a preset is a saved setting or a set of settings that you can apply to a layer or a tool. And the biggest thing with presets is that you can change them after you've applied them. You can adjust the settings, you can remove them, but with an action, usually once you run an action, that effect is permanent. So that's one of the biggest differences. Our presets are things like brushes and styles and swatches and patterns, and there's a few other ones that are thrown in there for good measure. Um, whereas the actions, you can use presets within actions, but the actions are gonna play back specific steps that we've pre-recorded um, to accomplish the end goal. So that's the difference there. We also have scripts. Actions are not scripts, they're a little bit different. So with scripts, those are actually programmed language. In order to write a script, you have to know either AppleScript, JavaScript, or VBS script. And whereas actions are so much easier, you just kind of press record and you go through your steps and you press stop. And what you're left with is a series of steps that you can then repeat. So anybody who has the full version of Photoshop can create an action without knowing any code language but you do have to have the full version of Photoshop in order to create actions. You can't create actions within Photoshop Elements. That's one of the biggest um, defining lines that Adobe has between what they include in the more professional version of Photoshop and then the, the more user-friendly version of Elements. Um, but the great thing is that Elements can play back actions and any actions that have been designed with Elements in mind and have been tested for elements can be played back in elements and they can unlock features that you can't get to in Photoshop elements um, because they were available, they're, they're kind of built in behind a locked door and actions can allow us to sneak back behind that door and get to some features you can't get to otherwise. So installing actions got way, way easier in elements version 11. That's when Adobe introduced the Actions panel to Photoshop Elements. Prior to that, you had to show your hidden files and find the right files and copy them to the exact right location. And it was super frustrating for people and kind of intimidating and hard to do. But the great thing now is that it is super, super easy. So I'm going to flip over real quick to Elements and just show you how easy it is. Okay. So here we are in Elements, and you'll see I'm in Expert Mode, and that's the most important part. If you're not in Expert Mode, when you go up here to Window, Actions, it will be grayed out, and you won't be able to see it. So just make sure you're in Expert Mode, and then that is going to bring up your Actions panel. And you'll see these actions right here are the built-in ones that come with Photoshop Elements. And all we have to do to add to this list is go up here to the contextual menu, otherwise known as the hamburger over here, <laughs> and click load actions. That's all there is to it. And then you just have to go to your hard drive and find the action you wanna load. So if we go out here to my desktop and go into my actions folder, you'll see here, these are the actions we're gonna be working with in a little while. 
and I just have to navigate to the correct version. And you'll see here, in a lot of my actions, I include separate install files depending on what version you're in. And so you just have to find the right version to get the right action and click open. And there they are, they're right there. So that's, installing actions is that simple. And the great thing is, you can delete these. You haven't deleted them off your computer. If you wanna install it again, you can just go back and reload it again. So those of you who are current members, if you would like to uh, take the actions a little bit further, we will be doing a part two next week in our Sunday snippet. But if you want to learn a little bit more about actions, go ahead into the members only section. I'm going to go in from my website here, naods.com. Upper right hand corner, you should have a little icon here that says my library, or you can get there by logging in. But I believe this one was done in 2017 and it was done by Wendy. She is our actions queen. So let's go into 2017 members classes. And if you scroll down, you will see where it says use, install, and shop for actions with WinDesign scraps. So it will go from step, all the way from step one, all the way how to install them and use them. So check that out if you want to. Otherwise, we'll see you next week for the Sunday snippet. Bye for now. Thank you.